Thanks, Josh. All right, Zach Can and Cassidy Can are with us this morning, I hope. Are they on the screen behind me? Almost. Uh, it is 3.30 a.m. Monday in Papua New Guinea. And so here's uh, Zach and Cassidy. Great to see you guys. And we're going to get an update from Zach and Cassidy. Uh, I've got uh, some questions that we're going to ask them together. But uh, just want you to be aware that next time we do an update with the cans, we're going to return the favor. So we're actually going to show up with a camera at your house at 3.30 in the morning <laughs> and let them see you. So, yes. uh, yeah. One thing we know, uh, Zach and Cassidy, is that um, tomorrow's going to be okay. Because you're already there and God is with you. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah tomorrow's pretty, pretty wonderful. Yeah, no, pretty good. Yeah. Dark and gloomy, but other than that, <laughs> not too bad. Um, tell us, give us an update on where is the process with bringing the gospel and the scriptures to the Doe people? Yeah. Well, uh, we are about six months away from starting a literacy program. So we have about six more months of language learning to go. I had a chance to go take a, a language check uh, back in the end of October. And basically what they said was, I can speak do words and I can speak do sentences, but putting it all together into long stories uh, not as, not as fluid, not as easily. So all the little wonderful connectors that we have in language that make paragraphs fit together, thoughts fit together, all the if, thens, therefores, and how those are used in daily speech, those things I still have some study to do, some investigation to do. So we're going to keep studying, keep telling stories as often as we can. Uh, to the people, just going out and talking about anything, talking about what we did yesterday, what we're going to do the next day, uh, talking through uh, other world stories where we try to explain something that's foreign to them, like baseball, uh, anything that just helps our language abilities to grow. And all of that with the goal of being able to teach them about a culture that's foreign to all of us, which is the, the culture that the Bible takes place in. And we want to share that story clearly and accurately. And so that's the goal of all this. So we have about six more months of language learning, and then we'll do literacy. And Cass has uh, some literacy books here that, we're, that we put together. Um, and the, the literacy portion is really to help them learn how to read and write. Uh, because while on, on the one hand, the goal is to preach the gospel so that people will be saved, the, the long-term goal is that we want a church that can support itself, sustain itself, feed itself with God's word. And you can't do that if the Bible's not translated, first of all, which we also have to do. And second, uh, if you've translated it and no one can read it, it doesn't, doesn't do anyone any good. So we're going to spend about three to six months getting a literacy program started, which hopefully the people here will be able to take on slowly and so that we won't have to be managing that anymore. And then we'll uh, translate lessons, translate the Bible, and Lord willing, people will be saved. Great. So we're looking at a gospel uh, uh, presentation sometime at the end of 2019. Um, maybe 2020. Cassidy, we'd love to see the primers that you've been working on. We, we grew up on C spot run, learn how to read English uh, that way. And you've been doing that for the dough people. Uh, we, can you just hold that up to the camera and let us kind of see what you've been working on? Yeah. Okay. So here's a book. Um, on this page, they're learning the letter H and you know, and there, it, they te we teach them by syllables, so they'll go through and learn syllables. And then on the next page, for the next few pages, they'll have, well, this one's all marked up because I switched it. But on the next few pages, they'll have um, stories that have 
that new letter in it. And then it just progresses on like that. So they start with I, O, and N. And there's a few stories that only use those three letters. And then they learn R and E and a few more stories. Of course, you know, it's like food, eat food, you know, for the first couple uh, stories. And then it gets harder and harder to the end. So, Cassidy, can you give us a sample in dough? Yeah, sure. Manayu motoko ote, tokote koro yero ote. So, Manayu went to Motoko. She went there for her sweet potatoes. That's that's in the middle of the second primer. So, life changing stuff right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So the boys are sleeping. Um, we yeah. Do, yeah, we decided not to get them up for this. <laughs> that's great. We've got the pre-recorded video that we would show in case Skype failed, but we'll put that on the website so the guys can, so we can all see your house and see the boys. Can you tell us what do the boys do for fun? Yeah. Well, in the in the video, they said they watch movies for fun because it was movie night that night. <laughs> um, but. I don't know, probably the same, a lot of the same stuff they do in America. They read a lot and um, play, pretend a lot in the house and outside. And yeah, around here, the kids just play with balls and run around on the grass. And there's a waterfall, so we go there sometimes and swim. Um, yeah, we've noticed that this this time around, Jude has done a, a great job getting connected with the kids more, uh, using a lot more of the trade language to communicate and getting out there. And of course, that has created some parenting situations as well, trying to help him learn how to love uh, on kids that are not so nice and, and learning how to listen and not always trying to take charge. And so it's yeah. been... It's been really good though. It's been sweet to see him start to get out and uh, he wants to keep going further and further and further away from our house. So we have to, we have to set up boundaries. What challenges are you guys facing? Well, uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, that we're facing is, uh, or are, um, lack of teammates. So we've been here alone for the last six months. And for language learning, that hasn't really impacted us as much because we were going to learn language at the pace we were going to learn it. Uh, having teammates might have given us some insights a little quicker into the language. But for the most part, that has just progressed day by day. Um, but man, when we started getting into the next set of tasks that are coming as Cass has taken on literacy and as I've dabbled in translation and started getting lessons together and we've been translating short stories, uh, not, not Bible related, but just stories about health or planning food or cooking bread, just stories for the people for when they eventually learn how to read, just practice reading. It's hard to jump from uh, go get me a sweet potato to the Lord is sovereign over all things. Uh, and so they need, they need steps uh, in, in that work. And as we've started all that, we've really felt the pinch of not having uh, helpers. Uh, there's just so much work to do. There's work for six full-time people, seven full-time people. And it's just been the two of us and Cass is homeschooling. And so that's been, that's been hard. And, uh, Another challenge we face is, is just our, our sin. Uh, it's a daily battle, but it's also been uh, good to remember that the same gospel we're coming to, to preach to these people is the same gospel that we need. We're weak, and, and there's days where I'm supposed to be out and learning language, and it's like the last thing I do. And there's some days where I just don't have the self-control to get out there and, and do the hard work, and so it's... Uh, it's been sweet for us to just remind each other of, of the good news that Christ died to rescue us and, and he can rescue these people as well. 
uh, from their sins, which the longer we live with them, the more evident they become. So Probably ours, too. Probably, yeah, probably <laughs> ours. ours uh, yeah, ours towards them, too. Zach and Cassidy, what can we do to encourage you as a body of believers here? What are some tangible ways we can be an encouragement? Uh, be, be praying for us and uh, just remembering us in your, in your prayers. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't get our email updates, uh, maybe just, I don't know if the sign-up sheet is still in the back, but you can uh, jot your, your name and email address down and we'll get you added. And that'll give you an opportunity to read our updates and know how to, how to pray better to be more informed about what's going on. If you get our updates, read them. And, and if you have extra time, just a short note to let us know how you're doing. We love hearing updates from you guys back home. And we're so thankful for this incredible technology. We read updates from you guys all the time on Facebook and uh, other forms of social media. So we're really, we're really grateful for that. Um, thank you guys for how you've encouraged us and supported us thus far. Uh, yeah. We've been fighting the good fight and loving the Lord and his good news in the midst of really hard, trying circumstances. Um, and so we're, we're just uh, really grateful for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for helping send the Mitchells. I don't know if you know this, but their flight to Papua New Guinea took off six hours ago. So they are on their way. And we'll... <laughs> so we'll we'll see them. We actually leave uh, my Roro in about 24 hours, uh, a little longer than that. Yeah. It won't come at night, but uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning our time, uh, the helicopter will come and we'll head off on our first break. We've been in the village for six months now, so we'll head out and see the Laymans for a couple weeks and we'll get to see the Mitchells. The Mitchells, I think, arrive an hour or two before us in, in Medang. So we'll, we'll get to see them shortly. Okay, Zach, that's the uh, signal that uh, we're going to close this portion of our service, but we'd love to have you pray and um, pray for the work. We're praying for the work, but we'd love to hear your voice as you go before the Lord. Wonderful. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you for your good news. God, the good news that we are undeserving sinners and we are rebels against you and yet you have loved us and have sought us and have bought us with your blood. God, thank you that you reign over this universe and not one thing takes place apart from your divine direction. And God, all the, all the troubles that we face here, all the trials that my dear friends face back in Arizona in the States, God, you are aware and you are working. God, I thank you for this technology that connects us, that allows us to uh, see one another, to talk to one another. God, this is so amazing. And uh, God, I just thank you that we've had this opportunity to just meet briefly with our church family back home. We love them. God, would you be with them? Be their encouragement and their strength uh, as you are for us. God, may your gospel move forward in, in Papua New Guinea and in Phoenix. God, thank you for all the testimonies of, of people who are being a light in a very dark and sick world. God, we just long to see you, to be with you. God, this world is not our home. But God, thank you that while we are still here, we get to be your servants. And we get to be a part of the advancement of your good news into the world until you do indeed one day come again and bring all of this to a close. And we will be with you forever. God, thank you for that with Grace Bible Church as they continue worshiping you this morning. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for sacrificing being with us in the middle of your night. Love you guys. Yeah. Right. Love you guys too. Okay. Let's stand up, greet one another, and send our kids to their classes.